Hi, everybody. It is Rainbow Day at Pleasant Street School. So I have all the colors from the rainbow represented. And I hope that it brings some happiness and joy and hope to your day. Tomorrow is hat day, hence the hat. And, um, and today we're going to read chapter 10 of Bob. So hopefully this isn't too distracting. Mm -hmm. So when we left off, oh, and my glasses today are purple. Mm -hmm. So when we left off, what was happening? Well, they had been, um, blah, 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 blah. they were talking about, her mom had told her story about magic, and then she thought that maybe their well was magic, and then he was saying he wished he had his mother, and she said, maybe you do have a mother. Maybe you have a whole big family, but he didn't answer. So this is chapter 10, Bob. And I just wanted to show you, hold on, that. But also a little clue on what's gonna happen in this chapter. Are you ready, Livy asks, standing at the door. She has a pink towel slung over her shoulder and a fresh bar of soap in her hand. She has decided that I need a bath. It's been five years, I point out, arms crossed. What's another few days? She makes a big show of pinching her nose closed. Well, what if I drown? We don't know if I can swim. You won't drown in the tub, she assures me. It's not even halfway full because of the drought. What if I slip down the drain? Maybe when a not zombie gets wet all over, he shrinks up into nothing. I'll put the stopper in. Fine, I grumble, allowing her to lead me out of the room. But I can't promise to use the soap. Oh, you'll use it all right, she says, pushing me ahead of her into the bathroom. She places the bar, the bar firmly into my hands and drapes the towel over the rim of the tub. I notice she has taken the liberty of filling the bathtub with a few inches of water and bubbles. And is that one of Grant's plastic roses floating on top? I thought your first bath in five years should be special, she says. I roll my eyes, but pull off the red sweatshirt and fold it carefully on the counter. I, ca I walk cautiously over to the tub. I wouldn't want to slip on a puddle and knock myself out. You're going to wear your tutu in the bathtub? I look down, half surprised to still be wearing it. I shrug. I've grown accustomed to it. I dip in one, I dip in one toe in the bubbly water. It's warm. What did you expect? It's a bath. I had expected it to be cold, but I don't know why. I dip my toe again and then extend my foot out to Livy. Does my toe look smaller to you? Livy groans. Your toe does not look smaller. You're not shrinking. It's true. I seem to be my same size. I'll be right outside reading. She waves the book with the half knight, half person on the cover. If Gran comes up, I'll duck back in. Will you be okay alone? I nod. Don't forget to wash under your arms and behind your ears. I roll my eyes. With soap, she says before shutting the door behind her. I double check that the stopper is in place. Then I put my whole foot in the tub. Then the other. It feels inviting. I slowly lower myself the rest of the way in, feeling the water cover my legs, then my belly, then my neck, in arms, I lean back and feel myself relax. Ah, that feels nice. It does. It really does feel nice, but it's more than nice. It feels like, like home. Livy must have known the bath wasn't just about getting clean. 
she wanted to take both our minds off of last night. She doesn't know it, but her mother crept into her room early this morning and kissed her goodbye. I stood right in front of her mom and waved. It was dark in the room, but not that dark. She didn't see me at all. I closed my eyes to think. If Libby's mom doesn't see me, and a kid like Danny, who doesn't know me like Libby knows me, sees a chicken, then maybe age is another clue to my magic. Baths are very good at helping one think. I had lots of time to think in the closet, of course. I was alone, but I wasn't alone at the same time. I made a home for myself inside my head and decorated it with all the things I learned and thought about and made with my Legos. I got in touch with my inner bobness. I know Livy feels awful about leaving me there all those years, but after that admittedly rocky adjustment period, and once I taught myself how to read, it was kind of awesome. My eyes pop open. I feel her guilt, I feel, sorry, I let her feel guilty when it wasn't even her fault. I never even told her any of the good stuff. I quickly scrubbed the places she told me to, and a few she left out. The bath water's all brown with dirt. Guess I did need a bath after all. I climb out of the tub just as the doorbell rings. I stay quiet, clutching my towel and dripping water onto the rug. Livy was right. I should have taken off the tutu. Sarah, Grand Nic Nicholas says a few seconds later. How lovely to see you. Come in, come in. I hear Livy stand up from her post outside the bathroom door and join Gran downstairs. Now Gran says, why don't you and Sarah catch up in your room for a while? You two used to giggle for hours. Oh, I really need to talk to Libby right now. And I also need to move my knight to F3 on my next turn instead of sacrificing my bishop as I was going to do. Baths are always good for chess strategizing. I actually only came for my hoodie, Sarah said quickly. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. It's just cold at the restaurant. Okay, I may not know a ton about human nature, but it sounds like the sweatshirt is just an excuse to see Livy. Don't be silly, Grand Nicholas says. We're happy to have you, aren't we, Livy? Sure, Livy says. Your sweatshirt is upstairs. I'll go get it. But Grand insists there's plenty of time before lunch and that they should go up and play. Super fast, like the flash, I grab the sweatshirt from the counter, run to the bedroom, throw the sweatshirt on the bed, run into my closet and close the door. Whew. The girls come into the room. Livy is talking really loudly to warn me she's not alone, but she forgets I have super hearing. Or maybe I never told her. While they get settled, I struggle to put on the chicken suit, which has shrunk to at least two sizes. I pull on the neck and try to stretch it out, but it doesn't help. <gasps> you still have Rufus, Sarah exclaims. I put my eye up to the crack of the door frame. She's taller than Livy with yellow hair, and she is hugging Rufus. My Rufus! Well, not mine exactly, but it's more mine than this girl's. I recognize her even though she's gotten a bit taller. After old Libby left, this girl used to come up to read the books on the bookshelves a few times. She even took one once. I saw her tuck it under her jacket. She stops by to see Gran now and again with her family, but for the past few years, she's only been a voice downstairs. And now she's here at a really bad time and I wish she'd leave. You know Rufus, Libby asks her. Sarah nods. Gran comes in with a tray full of cookies and sets it down on the dresser. Are you two getting reacquainted? The girls don't answer. I don't think they know what reacquainted means. I do, because the R's had a lot of good words. It means getting to know each other again. I've had a lot of personal experience with that lately. I also brought you this. Grand Nicholas hands Livy something small and rectangular but I can't tell what it is. Your tape recorder, Livy asks. 
Don't be surprised. You girls used to record yourself singing into it. Livy reddens. I have such a bad voice. That's not what I remember, Gran says. Sarah takes the tape recorder and presses a button. A few seconds later, the unmistakable sound of two five-year-old girls singing a pop song fills the air. Even though I'm annoyed at having to wait like this, I can't help but smile. They sound so happy and carefree. Livy sounds like the old Livy, the one who didn't care if her singing voice wasn't the best in the world. That's embarrassing, Livy says, reaching over and switching it off. Totally, Sarah says. I think it's lovely, Gran says, leaving the room. You two have fun. Livy grabs for a cookie. Sorry about taking your sweatshirt home. That's okay, Sarah says. I hear the bed squeak as she sits down. I didn't really come here for the hoodie. I knew it. Mm hmm Well, that is the end of chapter 10. So, a few things to think about in that chapter, isn't there? Hmm. Wonder what will happen next. I hope you had a great rainbow day. I thought it was lovely, even though it's kind of raining. No rainbows, there's no sun. But anyway, happy day tomorrow. Please send those pictures in to Mr. Levesque. He'll be so excited. Okay, see you next time.